Thank you very much, uh, Dr. to say thank you to uh, preparation committee, specifically Hannah and Dr. Sidney for this hard work, and thank you very much for coming today. Uh, yeah, I think like uh, the heading of my presentation <coughs> shows that I'm going to talk about the Kurdish and Turkish lawyers in Turkey, uh, and specifically the treatment which they receive in the between and uh, until recently. At the beginning, I'm going to talk about the like, uh, uh, 90s and how the lawyers have been treated. And, and then I'm going to introduce a couple of like, human rights organizations and how their lawyers, the members of those organizations, have been really targeted. And then later on, I'm going to look at, uh, uh, I'm going to look at the define the lawyers in the sense and then look at the domestic law and show how the domestic law last international uh, has been uh, breached. And lastly, I'm going to define lawyer as a hostage of peace process and explain that why they are hostage of peace process. Let's start. Uh, yeah, who are these lawyers? I think like if you look at the, the cases that they represented, you have understand who are these lawyers. Basically, this is the map of the mass graves in Turkey. And as you can see, this is the Kurdish region in Turkey. There is 353 mass graves in Turkey, and they represent those people. Yeah, this is Saturday mothers. They are looking for their children in Turkey. So far, 757 people have disappeared after they were arrested in Turkey. They represent them. This is villages which have been burned in Turkey. More than 4,000 villages were forcibly evacuated and burned. They represent those people. These two children who were killed by state security forces weapons. Like 569 of them were killed in the last 20 years. And 298 of them that are still imprisoned on political cases. They represent them. This is journalists. 65 journalists still are imprisoned in Turkey. They represent them. 2,776 students are imprisoned in Turkey. They represent them. This is Hassan Kev. It's one of the UNESCO World Heritage. The Turkey wants to make down in that. This is in Kurdish area. They represent those people. And who are they then? They are human rights activists. They are also the victim of the conflict. One of the lawyers in the lawyer's trial in Istanbul, he defined himself when they asked him who you are. They, he said that he is the, he's the victim of the conflict because he saw that his village was burned when he was five years old. And I will go further, I will define them as a hostage of the peace process, and I will explain this point in the last uh, part of my presentation. Basically, in Turkey, three main lawyers' human rights organizations have been attacked and targeted by state. Human Rights Association is one of the most oldest and respected human rights organizations in Turkey. They have branches in almost every part of the Turkey. They have been subjected to systematic execution and persecution. In 20 years, 27 years' time, 26 members of the human rights organization who are mainly Kurdish are either killed by unknown perpetrators, including four of them are lawyers. And how these lawyers are killed is very important. I think that they give really scary message to the public. They kidnap them, specifically in 1993 and 1994. They torture them, uh, and after one week, they saw their body basically. They were killed in such a way. And one of them, they were shot. The message was clear, you can't not even defend, but you can't even be a lawyer for those people. There was an ongoing persecution and judicial harassment for the lawyers. In Nike, specifically the Kurdish area, the Ahmed Pass, they were individually arrested and imprisoned. And some of them, they were re-arrested again in recent arrests I've seen. And I will come back to them again. <coughs> There is recent judicial harassment towards lawyers of human rights organizations. They were particularly targeted as a part of the so-called Union of Communities of Kurdistan Operation, for which police investigation started in the beginning of 2007, and members of IHT Diyarbakir were retargeted again. This is Muharrem Erbey. He is the vice president of IHT, the human rights organization, and the president of the human rights organization of uh, the he was arrested alongside with his, uh, his 
five colleagues, two of them were released, but three of them still in the pre-trial detention in Turkey since 2009. The, the Ankara branch of human rights organization, they published a report on the human rights violation in prison, and of course they give the prize for it. In 2009, the Ankara branch was also attacked. Four of them were arrested, and later they were sentenced to prison for six years and three months. And the second law firm which has been attacked is the Ashton Law Office. This office was funded by the Kurdish and Turkish lawyers after the Kurdish leader, Mr. Erdogan, was uh, abducted in Kenya and brought back to the Turkey in the prison. Um, they have been since then representing Mr. Erdogan. But they have been attacked uh, by civilians and the police as soon as they started uh, the President Erdogan. Uh, and it was very interesting, like the, the, the president of the state defining who is going to represent Erdogan, basically. According to him, none of the lawyers should represent him because he doesn't deserve to be represented. And none of the lawyers should have been done. And therefore, there was a lot of political attack had been organized by the Turkish civilian fascists or the Polish in order to stop them to not represent him when they go to the island, because in a specific island, where nobody can access it, apart from specific permission through the, the military forces. And then, it was not enough. In 2005, they made the Öcalan law. What is the Öcalan law? It's, it's very interesting because like, when you are in lawyer uh, in Turkey, you don't need, need to give your fingerprints to, to see your client. First, they have to give the fingerprints anytime they go to anywhere. And then this law makes harassment of legal representatives is really legitimate. Let's look at that, how they make it. Lawyers, they can be dismissed to represent Mr. Öcalan without even any reasons. As long as the commencement of the investigation is started, they can not assign a representative for two years. Third person can listen to the consultation held between Öcalan and his lawyer, despite, according to domestic law, the consultation should be confidential. And we have to be, I have to also mention the case of European Court of Human Rights in that in 2005, when they find Turkey guilty for breaching right of fair trial on the ground that when there was a conflict, when Öcalan was brought into Turkey, someone was dealing between, uh, someone was taking the conversation between him and his lawyers. And despite that, they, they made new law. And this is Mr. Rossi. This is very funny. Basically, in Turkey, a lot of people, alongside with the lawyers, they have been arrested and sentenced in prison for saying Mr. Öcalan Mr. According to them, certain, law, uh, certain political prisoners, they don't deserve to be called Mr. Basically, what was requested from the lawyers to say their client, to humiliate their clients. And because they didn't do that, and when they make a communication with the uh, state saying we such as lawyers want the following lawyers go to go to the island and see our client they were persecuted because they put the that word famous mr Sir. and there was unpleasant mass arrest in turkey previously there was like individual arrest in turkey but on 22nd of november 2011 in 16 cities 46 lawyers of urgent was arrested they were accused of membership in an illegal organization, being member of the leadership committee of Kurdish community um, uh, of Kurdistan and passing orders to Öcalan. And I will come to that uh, point, passing orders to Öcalan, in the last bit of my presentation. The, the funny thing is, despite they were like defined mem being member of the leadership committee, when we look at the indictment, there is no such accusation. Basically, the lawyers still don't know what they are accused of. And then the third, Progressive Lawyers Association in Turkey. It's established in 1990 and has 12 branches in Turkey. And one of the, their founders was killed in Istanbul in 1994. Oh, of course, they also give prize to different Öcalan lawyers and KJK trial. Uh, on 18 of January 2013, like 12 of them were arrested. 
because they are representing Ojalan's lawyers and KGB people who are arrested. <coughs> okay, what is the international legal uh, framework? Turkey has ratified a lot of international framework, including the basic uh, uh, rules for lawyers on United Nations, International Convention on Civil and Political Rights, International Convention on the Elimination of all forms of racial discrimination, European Convention on Human Rights, members of the Council of Europe, and therefore is bound by the recommendation of the Committee of Ministers. Okay. Let's, I'm not going to look at the international region law too much because I'm the previous uh, speaker that covered it, but I'm going to just give a couple of examples on violation of domestic law. According to Turkish law, 1927, it requires the consent of Ministry of Justice to bring the proceeds, to bring the case against uh, lawyers. No such a consent has been taken in any of those arrested. Basically, the lawyer's office shall be only be searched with the court decision under the supervision of the public prosecutor in the presence of the president of FARC or representative lawyer. And the items which are collected, if they like conversation between the client and the lawyer, they should be transferred and returned back to the lawyers. There was a search warrant by the, the search warrant was issued by the, uh, by the judge instead of the court. A search conducted in lawyers' offices without the presence of the prosecutor and the presence of the bar or legal representative of them. And the search in lawyer premises took at night, despite is against the domestic law. It's very interesting, like when the lawyers warned the police that they shouldn't get into the, their offices because they have to follow the law, they broke into the doors and they got in. They confiscated all of their items. And Article 135 and 130. Four of the Turkish law on criminal procedure. They have two conditions for search. It has to be reasonable grant that there will be arrest. And then if evidence can't be obtained through other methods, they have to do this. And Article 1, like uh, Article 135 of the Turkish law on criminal procedure, it, say, it states that intercept evidence should be last resort and based on the concept of proportionality and tractability. Basically, in search warrant, it violates the principle of proportionality. It's failed to provide any reason for authorization of intercept evidence. Telephone recordings do not follow the procedure code. Many of the recordings were made, were made outside of the time period which authority has been given. No authority was given for technical research because they confiscated the computer, telephone, everything. Even personal conversation between family members are included. And there was a restriction on orders on the investigation of files until the trial of this lawyer started. No, the lawyers couldn't access any of them. No reason has been proved uh, and the bail, according to the Turkish law, they should be given a bail. But unfortunately, some of those lawyers still detained for four years, two years, and more than one year. No bail has been granted. And no decision has been given why the bail is not being granted. That's something else. This lack, and they don't know when it's like next uh, trial will be. There is lack of clarity on that obligation to proceed with expectation to turn to Article 923, uh, 14, 2, and 6, 1, fair trial. And all of them, the judge has never provided any reason for the decision to grant or refuse to bail, allow to use all inclusion of intercept evidence, or to adjourn the hearings. This decision, this denies the defense the opportunity of formulating any grant for appeal. Basically, so far they don't know what they are. And when this issue was raised by one of the lawyers, the, the, the judge said he was going to consider this point when he gives the sentence. This shows that they have been defined as a, as a guilty by the judge, even without the procedure has been finished. <laughs> And, of course, it is violation of the basic principle on the role of lawyers because the identification of the lawyers with their clients, alleged offenses and the interference with their professional duties violate Article 16, 18 and 22 of the United Nations basic principle on the role of lawyers. There is a big solidarity with arrested lawyers amongst the world. 
and we are really thank you, th thank you to those people who are really supporting hard. Um, now, I'm just going to uh, give a little bit information about why they are opposed of the peace process. If you look at the, the Turkish background a little bit, we will find the main reason for that. Okay, there was a state of emergency in Turkey from 1987 to 2002. And according to that state of emergency, there was a like special court, and people will be just prosecuted. In Turkey, like the terrorism law, I could say, is worse than the Spain one. Uh, a lot of people will be just prosecuted in like symbolic trials. And during that time, thousands of people were suspected being linked with the PKK, Kurdish Workers' Party, and were extrajudicially executed. Thousands were detained, tortured, and were subjected to unfair trials. Thousands of, of people are disappeared. And according to, this is official figures are taken from the army, 30,000 of people have lost their life. And 25,000 of them are Kurds. 5,000 5, of them are security forces. And more than 4,000 villages were forcibly evacuated. Now, what is this lawyer doing? They were not just like in the port. They were mobilizing for civil and political rights in Turkey, but also externally as well. They brought a lot of cases of the European Court of Human Rights. And this one, and basically, they managed to show that the, the international law, raising awareness about how the violation of human rights occurred in Kurdish area, but also they name and shame the Turkish practice in internationally. And as a result of that, they were all, always targeted by the state. Because they were not just like in the courtroom, as a, as a, in Ireland, but they were like politically motivated and tried to challenge it in the grassroots. And what happened? That's the reason why they are just until not proven. When we look at the prolonged pre trial detention, lack of equality of the arms, lack of access in the early stage to the prosecution evidence, the method of obtaining pro uh, prosecution evidence, insufficient independence, impartiality of the tribunal, shows that it is completely political case. Lawyers have to prove their innocence against you, no evidence. Why they are why such a target against them? They are hostage of peace process. Since the first peace discussion between the Turkish state and the PKK, Kurdish Workers' Party in 20, 20 March of 1993 has started. Kurdish lawyers, alongside with the Kurdish MPs, have been specifically targeted by the state when the peace discussion has collapsed. Now, on 4th of September, the Kurdish MPs were shot dead in Batman. And 2nd of March 1994, seven Kurdish MPs were arrested. If you look at the date, the execution of Kurdish lawyers and the arrest also occurred after that day. After the T5, the first T5 has been collapsed. And then let's look at the recent peace discussion. The Oslo pistols. Basically, also pistols again this started between the PKK, Kurdish Workers Party, and the state in, informally in 2006, and it becomes formal negotiation process in 2008. In April, April 2011, also discussion was collapsed. After that, five Kurdish MPs and 20 miles are imprisoned. And November 2011, arrest of 30, 46 lawyers of Ojala. This shows that the state, the state uh, demonstrates that this shows that the state sees the lawyers as one of the main factors in the peace process. And if they arrest them, if they put the pressure on them, the Kurds will gonna get weak alongside with the Kurdish politician, and then they can uh, enforce their more uh, demands to the PKK. It's one of the points. And the second point is to show everybody, to show everybody saying, look, we can get the most active people in the legal sense and in the political sense be arrested. You don't have anyone to either defend you and to talk on your behalf. That is the reason why they target the lawyers, Kurdish or Turkish lawyers in Turkey. Thank you very much.